Hello, what is up guys? It's Evil Duos Arm here today, back with another Blade and Soul video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best place for a new player to farm in the game. And we're also going to take a look at some of the items that you want to pick up while you're farming at this location. Real quick before we begin, if you're new to the channel, new to Blade and Soul, or enjoying the videos on the channel, please consider subscribing as it does mean a lot to me. And without further ado, let's get into it. So if you don't recognize the area already, having already visited here, the location is Moon Refuge. Moon Refuge is an awesome place for a new player to pick up their accessories, their weapon, pretty much everything you need to be able to run about 90%, 95% of the content that is available in this game, so that is awesome. The other nice thing about this is it only is going to take you about 2-3 to three weeks of farming in this location in addition to you doing your daily dungeons and things like that in order to get all this gear so it's really a great place for a new player to catch up to more recent content as well as learn their class because fresh out of the story you still have quite a bit to learn about your class and different combat mechanics. So let's start off with how do you get to Moon Refuge if you're a completely new player who's never visited here before, how do you get to this location? So I'm going to use some old footage because I don't actually have any characters that are at the point where you can pick this up. But basically what's going to happen when you hit HM14 is that you're going to get a quest letter. And that quest letter, to get to, you're going to press J on your keyboard, navigate to the quest letter tab, and you're looking for a quest called Taking Refuge. So go ahead and accept that quest, and it's going to send you on over to Celestial Basin. Once you get to Celestial Basin, talk to this dude right here. This dude is going to give you a quest that sends you on over to Moon Refuge. And to get to Moon Refuge, you're going to navigate to your map, and it is located in the bottom right corner of Solok. So navigate to your map, and click on Solok in the top left, and navigate to the bottom right for Moon Refuge. So once again, in order to get here, you're going to need to be Hong Moon level 14. So to see your Hong Moon level, look in the bottom left corner next to your name. It's like right below where my webcam is. It'll tell you your Hong Moon level. By completing the story, you're going to be just about Hong Moon 13, so you just need to level up one more time, which is basically a couple days of just casually playing through dungeons, nothing too crazy. If you are struggling to get to this level, what you can do is hop on over to Celestial Basin, which on your map is located in Gunwon City and Celestial Basin in the bottom right corner right here. Do some quests in there so that you can buy your first two weapon upgrades so you can just pick right up and move right into stride when you do get into Moon Refuge. So now that you're in Moon Refuge, what do you do? So the first thing you're going to want to do after getting here is turn around and talk to this tree dude up here. He's going to give you the main area quest. It's a daily quest you can do every single day for a solid amount of gold. It gives you three gold, but that's not what you're really in it for. You're in it for the Starlight Powder although the gold is a pretty nice bonus. So if we look at that quest a little bit closer, what you need to do is gather 30 of these Bane Stones. These Bane Stones drop from the various mobs in the area. So what you're going to do is basically go around this area killing everything. This is one of the few open world areas actually in Blade and Soul, so that's pretty cool that you get to mess around in this location. It's got a few distinct little biomes. It's a nice little area. Anyway, what you're going to do is kill a whole bunch of the enemies in this location to get these Bane Stones. After you've gathered 30 Bane Stones, you're going to get four of these Starlight Powders. Well, what are the Starlight Powders good for? If you navigate to the quest letters option, so to get to the quest journal, press J on your keyboard to open this menu up, and then navigate to quest letters over on the right. Scroll all the way down the bottom, you're going to see Zevnar's Zeal. Click on this and accept this quest immediately. So what Zevnar's Zeal is, is it is a quest that rewards you one of these chests for killing mobs in the area. So what you're basically doing is doing both of these quests at the same time, kind of gives you double your rewards for the same amount of effort. The reason you want these chests is that if you take the chest, plus those starlight powders that we were just looking at a second ago, and head on over to this general merchant right here, you can redeem the starlight chest by trading one starlight powder plus one moonlight chest. The starlight chest has double the amount of moonlight buds, which is our currency that we are looking to farm while we are farming in this area, because every single thing on this menu from this merchant can be bought for moonlight buds, and it's some pretty awesome stuff. So let me go through that and show you how it works. So I've navigated over to my favorite location in Moon Refuge, Moontide Bay, when I'm farming these things. Basically, I just go around in a circle and kill everything in the circle. So I'm up to 17 out of 20 of these enemies. But as you can see, while you're killing them, they're going to drop these little bags with the blue markers over them. Pick up the bags. That's how you get the Bane Stones. And then once you get to 20 enemies, which should be two more for me right here, so please bear with me, you're going to complete the quest of Zavnar Zeal. So, completing Zavnar's Zeal will reward you with the rewards that we looked at earlier, basically the Moonlight Chest. So the Moonlight Chest on its own has 4-6 to six Moonlight Buds, and this is a repeatable quest. You can farm this as many times as you want. So after you get those first 4 chests for the day, since that other quest that gives you the Starlight Powders is a daily quest, you will continue to farm these Moonlight Chests over and over and over again. If you are with a party, getting kills counts with the party, so if you're with a party farming close enough, you can kind of speed this up. A lot of people like to do it at the spider location because they spawn really fast there. But anyway, for solo play, I really like this one. So we'll go ahead and redeem that. So after you've turned in that quest and redeemed it right there, what you can do is hop on over to the quest letters, scroll back down to the bottom, and redeem another Zavnar Zeal from the bottom of your quest line. Always be redeeming this, otherwise you're wasting time. 
and then just continue along farming until you get all the bane stones and then obviously you'll continue farming these further and further as you farm for more and more moonlight buds during this method. So I've gone ahead and completed Mid Bummer Night's Dream, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on that, open it up, and complete it to get my four powders. Then once I've got the four powders plus my quest chests from the Zavnar Zeal quest, I'll go ahead and head over to this merchant and click on the Starlight Chests and just go ahead and buy two of them I think is how much I have for. And if I go ahead and click on the chest and open them, you'll see that I get a currency called Midnight Buds. So after you've used up all of your Starlight Powders, the only thing left to farm repeatedly in this area are going to be Zavnar Zeal Quests. Those Zavnar Zeal Quests, the Zavnar Chest, gives you six, or four to six Moonlight Buds every time you farm it, so you're looking at about an average of five. So the next big question you're probably going to have is how many of these quests can I complete per hour, or how many Moonlight Buds can I get per hour? So every Zavnar Zeal Quest that you do after this, I seem to be able to do about 20 to 25 per hour when I'm playing completely solo. If you're in a group, you can probably push closer to about 30 per hour. What this means is a solo player, you're looking at about 100 to 125 Moonlight Buds per hour, and in a group, you're probably pushing more towards 150 Moonlight Buds per hour. So why is this important? Because every single item you need as a new player to complete just about all the content, like I said earlier, is available for Moonlight Buds here at the Merchant. So Shin Hiwan has all of the different items you could possibly want as a new player. And what I'm going to do is kind of give you an idea of which ones you absolutely want to pick up. So if you pick up everything you need on this list as a new player, you're looking at 3,150 Moonlight Buds, which is an absolute boatload. Uh, basically, if you divide that out by the 125 per hour, you're looking at about 25, 26 hours of having to play this game to get all these different items, which seems like a lot, but considering like an older player who played this game before, you probably would have had to spend at least two, three months to try and get all these different items. So to be able to pick something up playing two, three hours a day for a couple weeks is actually a really, really great change. Additionally, two of the items, the Skybreak Spire Ring and Skybreak Spire Earring Chest that are priced at 600 a piece are kind of overpriced, especially since Skybreak Spire is pretty much easy to get into at this point. You can find a party. I host free ones every week, every Friday. Anybody can join. So it's really easy to get a party for those and the accessories drop like candy in there. So kind of a waste if you wanted to spend them on that. So if you take that 1200 off there, you're only looking at 1950, which is putting you right around 16 hours. So basically play two and a half hours a day for two weeks and you have just about everything you need to do to tackle like 90% of this game. So really, it's an awesome place to farm as a new player. So to give you an idea of priority as to which ones you're going to want to pick up, you're going to want to get the Naryu Sanctum Bracelet, which you can also get from a plethora of other locations, but this is just one of the many you can get it. You're going to want to get the King's Gloves, and you're going to want to get your Skyguard Horizon Belt. Specifically, in the selection box you get from this belt, you're going to want to pick the Horizon Belt. The Skybreaker is a PvP belt. You want the Horizon Belt for your PvE content. Like I said earlier, the Skybreak Ring Chests and Earring Chests are okay. They're kind of overpriced for what you're getting. You're better off just farming those in your normal gameplay. If we hop over to the second tab, you're going to see eight Soul Shield pieces, the Fallen Soul Shield Chest Set. What you want to do is you want to get all eight of these. These are an instant upgrade to what the story gave you. They're amazingly powerful. They basically reduce some cooldowns on a lot of classes. They make classes feel a lot more responsive. They make your rotation a lot easier. Really, it's an amazing Soul Shield set you're going to want to pick up as soon as possible. The final tab that you're going to want to pick things up on is going to be over here. So you want to get a Xanos weapon, a Mechanizer weapon, a Dark Vakar weapon, the Locked Starstone weapon, and the Locked Rootwell weapon. These weapons are what you're going to use to upgrade your weapon, your actual weapon that the story gives you. So if you press Control i on the keyboard to open up the weapon upgrade paths, Head on down to the Riftwalk path that you get, you have the Riftwalker Dawnforge weapon. You're going to need the Ujara as well as the Cyrock pistols, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you get from Celestial Basin. And then every single other weapon you need to upgrade along the way, you pick up right here in this location, Moon Refuge. So you get them all right here. The Locked Starstone weapon and Rootwell weapons require brilliant keys. Do not open these with regular keys, it just gives you a random weapon. Don't suffer to the mercy of RNG Jesus. Pick up the item that you want to open these, which is the Brilliant Key. The Brilliant Key is available on the Dragon Express, if you head over to the Dragon Express. Scroll down to the bottom of the Exchange tab, this middle tab here, with the little uh, Solar Energy icon. You will see how Moon Brilliant Keys are available for 20 Solar Energies, which basically means you need to play the game for about 3 weeks to be able to open uh, up those weapons. But yeah guys, that is basically it for this area, so just to recap real quick, head on over to Moon Refuge as soon as you hit HM14 as a new player. Go ahead and talk to the dude over there, the little tree man that's hiding across the way. You can't actually see him because he's despawned, but that dude hiding over there, he'll give you your first quest to start up in this area. Repeat the Zavar Zabnar Zeal quest as many times as you possibly can in a day until your fingers fall off. 
take all the Moonlight Buds you get for completing those quests, and use them to redeem the various items that we just covered that will basically make your character stronger and also make this farming a lot easier going forward. Anyway guys, if this video did help you, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment if it helped you, leave a comment about other things you want to see, and as always, thank you so much for watching, I will see you at the next video, peace.